Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is the Naqabi Diaries. Um, today we have Sister Asia here. Um, Sister Asia, would you like to introduce yourself and let us know a little bit about what you do? Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It's a pleasure to, to be here and speak with you. Jazakallah um, My name is Asia. Uh, I don't know what would you like best to know. Um, I'm a Nikabi for three years, alhamdulillah now. Uh, I, the place where I come from, <laughs> not welcoming Nikabi at all, not welcoming uh, even Muslim, Muslim women. That's why I moved from Poland to uh, UK basically to be able to, to, to wear Nikab and, uh, you know, wear even Abaya, alhamdulillah. Um, I myself, I am a journalist. I have uh, 10 years <laughs> yeah, as a journalist, producer, reporter. Um, so that's, that's the, uh, the thing what I was doing for uh, um, basic, de basic de day uh, in my life before yeah. I uh, decided to move here to UK. Mm. And that's it, really. Now I'm going to have three kids. Uh, so, alhamdulillah, I'm just uh, I'm very happy. Sure. I, I did the move what I was uh, doing. So, I'll be uh, here in UK, just giving me the possibility to be Muslim woman. And this is the most important thing in my life. Alhamdulillah, so, uh, alhamdulillah. So um, how did you, how did you become a Muslim and did, did you convert to Islam in Poland? Yes, I mean you know it's always the the question for River is always like uh, asking very often and very like uh, lightly I think. Yeah. Um, I think what you have to remember as you you yourself you are River is is that yes. um, right. You have to remember that sometimes the story of the river is like going very, <laughs> very painful and mm. many different like negativities coming out of there. So some yeah. uh, river girls they do not like to speak. Um, it's reminding about the, the negative things for them, yeah, of or um, you know, it's very very private things like very private experience in the way mm -hmm. so when I came here I did have a lot a lot of questions like that and uh, interview uh, and, uh, many many people of the medias or uh, like from the most ask ask me can we record uh, your story how you get to to Islam and something like that and I always say no mm. <laughs> so <laughs> I never want to speak about it, not because I didn't want to share that or, or you know, because this is the best day in, in every river uh, life, yeah, I think. Of course, yeah. um, but it's not like that when you oh, just come one day, you wake up and you decide to be river. It's most of the time is like kind of uh, uh, step by step by little step, something brings you to to, to Islam. For me, that was kind of two years. Mm -hmm. So I think it was over, over the time, two years, a long time to, to, to uh, get to uh, Islam. And that was uh, the most strange experience I ever have in my life. Because I didn't know any Muslim. Uh, of course, because my work, so or the story of the uh, America in 9-11 uh, is just was coming up and sh uh, going away and coming up again and stuff like that. But I really didn't know any Muslim. So uh, I didn't uh, have any possibility to, to be uh, affected by the Muslim. Um, actually, uh, actually, I had um, friend who was a uh, uh, very church oriented. It was like in the uh, church, and uh, we were speaking 
once and he said, you know what? We really never read the Bible or any holy book, like any, uh, any, uh, uh, no Quran, no Torah, nothing like that. And I said, yes, you're right. We have a Bible. We're reading some of this from, from, from it, but we never read it all. So he said that was, he was uh, in, I was in age of 20, Four, I think, <laughs> and uh, we was in the same uh, the same age. We was like uh, growing up together. We was going to through the uh, junior school together, through the you know uh, secondary school together. So we was knowing very well each other, uh, and that was the time when uh, we just, that was just like really very uh, very lightly conversation, and then after some time. Uh, he, call, he called me and he said to me, you know what, have all the books, I bought them, and I'm going to start reading. I asked him, so which book you're going to start read? When are going to start? And he said, I will, I'm going to start from Torah, so the Quran I will left for the last one. So I said to him, so you know what, borrow me Quran, I have a Bible in home, and then <laughs> when you finish uh, your, your Torah, so we exchange. And I was expecting that to know. <laughs> and he was saying that in so arrogant way, like make me angry in the, in the way, like how he can be like this. We are friends for so long. And he mm. just, he don't want to borrow the book. It's like uh, not acceptable. I will just even come and said our friendship is finished and stuff like that. I was like, okay, that's fine. Next day, I just tried to find where I can get Quran, where I can buy Quran, because in my country there's no uh, like easy getting to the uh, Islamic. Is there a copy of the Quran? Christianity. It's not about only I think about the uh, Islam, but anyway, any different religion. Yeah, but Christianity is just is difficult to get to. Like when I came here, I even didn't know about. Hindus, I didn't know about the Sikhs, uh, nothing like that. Yes, so, um, so I bought the Quran, and uh, when I start, start reading, I, I, of course, it's not Arabic Quran; it's, it's uh, Quran in English, uh, in Polish, in my language. So, I was going through this Quran all the time. I just when I start, I couldn't stop. I just was reading when I was going to the work. I have this Quran in my back. I remember whatever I have time in the in the car. I was I couldn't stop reading just like this. I, I would think of the Quran. I, would, <laughs> I remember this time. It was one week, and I have uh, Al Quran read, and I was for me after that was like this Al answer. What I was looking for was there. There's no. <laughs> there's I don't have to looking anymore for any answer. What I was going through and try to ask uh, my priest or, you know, my parents and everyone to explain me, like, by the facts. Uh, because I was always oriented, like, whatever I was doing, I must know facts. Yeah, <laughs> there's no opinion, there was no any, like, feelings, nothing what was based on feelings or, or opinions. I was straight away rejected, so that's why. I think I'm uh, I'm I'm journalist as well <laughs> because you know the, the the this method of facts was all the time in my in my uh, life. Mm -hmm. So after that, I was just thinking and thinking and thinking. With like, there is a so easy and so simple way of regulation of life, and if that give me a better life why to not try? I've been learning more through the uh, year about the Islam. I was trying some of the ideas on my <laughs> in my life, you know, and I was before Ramadan, that was the, the same year before Ramadan, I said to myself, I, I don't want to <laughs> be Muslim, that's it. It's just like, it's, it, it's not, not waiting for any longer. So oh. I find out where is my the closer and the mosque. I just went to the mosque 
I remember I went, but I didn't wear any Islamic clothes because you know, in my country you, you just, you cannot, I mean, you not, you not see any people in a hijab or even you, you are not able to buy any. In that time, yes. you wasn't able to buy any hijab or uh, forget about the baya. So I remember I was uh, in some long dress with some jacket on and that's it. I walked through, through, <laughs> through the mosque. I ask for the man, his name, and I straight away, I say, I want to be Muslim. Subhanallah. <laughs> <laughs> sister. And I'm ready. Uh, I want to tell me how. And the man, the man, you know, I was expecting he will tell me, like, you know, you need to do abolition. You need to invite you for the first, first prayer. Uh, he, everyone have to be there and stuff like that. Like, you know, I was thinking, like, okay, they will put me in some, like, on the front of all these people, they were like very uh, official. And he said, no, you don't need a wait a minute. He was, uh, he, he went somewhere, he bring to another man and say, we are ready to say Shahada. There is no reason to waiting any longer. Yeah. And Alhamdulillah, the, the best Shahada as well. Um, two of my life when I'm going, through. Sometimes, you know, um, you meet a Muslim and sometimes the Muslim they're not like you wish them to be. Yeah. Or they have no expectation, or especially in the first years of be revert because you uh, idealize so much the religion, because especially me, when I was reading through the Quran and through the Hadith, I was thinking that Muslims, they're amazing people. I want just, yes, you know, I want to just, uh, you know, uh, leave everything and just run to them. But uh, sometimes the reality just sorting you out. They are just strugg struggling people exactly the same. Like yes. the other people, they are not any perfect human on this planet. So that was the silly thing, me thinking like, oh, they will be so perfect. Um. So in that moment, when I have this shahada on my own, uh, actually, when I have the like some sometimes the, the, the meet some silly people who just put me a little bit down and say, oh, I ask myself, why I want to be Muslim? Should I be Muslim like that, or uh, you know, think like like this? Sometimes I'm sure others have the question for themselves, and then every time these days comes to me, like, you know, you didn't say shahada in front of all these people, for these people, to be praised by them or to be happy. You, you just did it for yourself and for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's it. And this, this day is always bringing me back to, you know, to, to write, uh, to write way. So Alhamdulillah, I do believe every, Alhamdulillah. anything what happened for, in our life is happened for reason. Um, even if you don't see the positivity or things don't working the way how you wish in that moment, in the from the bigger perspective, that can be better for you if that makes sense what I'm saying. For this day and the way how, the, how I have my Shahada, that was the biggest blessing uh, for years, like right now, <laughs> for, for right now, 10 years later, I'm here, 12 years later, I'm here. And every time is like when I have a little bit like um, down uh, on myself, it's always this, this day brings me back and say, oh, just forget about it. It's, it's not about them, it's about you. <laughs> so Alhamdulillah, this is, this is the way how, how it's, it's happened in, in my life. So I, I, that was way before I met my husband. I, uh, I took my shahada when I didn't know my husband. Uh, that was, I was already two years Muslim. So, yeah, this, this, this is my, my story. I don't know if somebody would believe that because this is like, 
<laughs> I don't my, even my friend don't know till now <laughs> how impact he have on my my convert to Islam. He don't know uh, of him about it, but you know th this is very strange way. Sometimes uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, open our hearts and open our eyes for the be the best for what is the best for us in our life. And sometimes I just think we need to a little bit more trust. Whatever happens, it happens for good for us, not yes, uh, for 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 bad. Or this is no any uh, for uh, make you struggle. Like for me, when I took Islam, that was I, I was a lot around uh, Arabs, and they always was telling me whatever I was, because I was like I want to. Do, 10 steps on front straight away. I want to be, you know, everything perfect. I want to be like uh, the best Muslim possible. But they always said, remember, Islam is for make your uh, sent to us for make our life happier mm -hmm. and easier. Not to make you struggle, not to make you worry even more what you have already before. Just you remember about it. So you know, I always remember about it as well. <laughs> Through the years, whatever I have struggled, even with silly putting hijab on, just calm down. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so sister, can I just ask you, um, mashallah, like your story is, you know, subhanAllah, like every revert story is different and it always amazes and inspires me to hear like how people came to Islam. So after, like, obviously, it must have been quite difficult for you, for you in the beginning, like, just becoming Muslim by yourself like that. But, like, at which stage did you feel that you wanted to wear the niqab? And how did you get into that? Because I think, for from my experience with a lot of other new reverts, often the hijab itself is something that's quite difficult to um, make that transition, like, because it's something that you can be automatically identified as a Muslim covering your hair and things like that. But obviously the hijab is an extra, uh, the niqab itself is an extra a step. So how did you come to be wearing the niqab? Oh, oh yeah. So, you know, there's, I was uh, uh, really uh, lucky and blessed, alhamdulillah as well. My parents was really open and, and, and uh, very, very positive in that way when when I told them I, I'm I'm gonna be Muslim. I just I think my mom even see me praying and she <laughs> she was first time when she see me praying just walk to my room and she just walk back and I said yes mom I'm a Muslim. SubhanAllah so she, she she my mom and my mother never like you know they never have any trouble they never make me any trouble. So I come amazing because I was always very supportive. I remember even my mom was was preparing for me first uh, uh, iftars when I was having first Ramadan. So she was like, "So tell me what you need to know." So <laughs> I, I was going to take her through. So I would tell her I what I need, what when I'm gonna to eat and stuff like that. And she was preparing for me to be sure I have my food on time. So I come that was. Like really, really nice as well. Just my parents, they always have that, uh, you know, the, the, the look on me like whatever makes you happy, if that makes you happy and you become, do, do whatever you feel. If you just don't harm yourself and people around you, we are, we don't have problem with that. Um, that was very <laughs> different in my work. Uh, that was very different with my friends because they were just like getting crazy in the way. They were just like the way how they was acting. The alhamdulillah not upset me at all. I was just like finding, find out myself funny. <laughs> I couldn't believe them because they were just like, in my work, I start wearing hijab. I try, I've been trying wearing hijab, but the, 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 you know, the, of uh, people around you just make me feel like I have, there is no, um, when I'm wearing hijab, 
I should sh should keep myself, you know, modest in your behavior and your actions mm -hmm. and everything. And when I'm putting my hijab over their actions, I just lost my temper. I just um, I'm not the person what I should be, for example, because I did a few attacks, like very silly in the way, like very, well, not aggressive, but for example, when I just told them I'm not going to drink alcohol anymore in the way because the, the way how I was living, the, uh, the alcohol was every day. It's not like, you know, in the, not in the way of the drinkers when we're not going parties and stuff, but the wine to the drinking, uh, to the eat dinner. Yes, um, yeah. When you're going somewhere out and they're opening some uh, new gallery, they always champagne there and stuff yeah. like that. I just say no, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm with you. I I'm gonna celebrate with you. But you know, for me that wasn't any problem. For them it was so huge. It was a problem. problem, yeah, because you were just uh, because you wasn't I, drinking. I, yes. And they was even my 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 uh, told me, Are you pregnant? I said, No, I'm not. So you have no wow. reason to drink with with that or that person uh, that opened my eyes even more like I didn't expect that and they didn't realize that is the the <laughs> because you know the drinking pro problem you always um, attach for the drinkers for like you know low level people who just just drinking and they, they lost themselves in the drinking but for me that was like if you have problem with me to not drink this this glass of champagne that you have some problem. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Problem. And if you is more of you, and you have exactly the same problem, I do not want to be around you. So in the way, Alhamdulillah, Islam just saved me from that as well. Alhamdulillah. So did you find it like? Obviously, um, well, you know, some people find it difficult when they come in these, you know, friends, these, these kind of situations happen, and you know, they're having this lifestyle change. So. Mm -hmm. When you was when you was facing this type of resistance from like people at your workplace and stuff like that, did that push you more to Islam? Then is that what you're saying? Yeah. That was pushing me even more to Islam and even okay. give me the like, uh, like give me the like. I was more sure that my choice was right. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. You know, more people trying like put me down in in, in my decision. So I was feeling like that's the right decision what I have done because I choose Islam exactly for to not be, uh, you know, uh, to, to get out of all this silliness. I what I really didn't agree with. I, I didn't agree with just that from beginning. I never agree like I have to drink alcohol. I never agree to be, uh, you know, living in the big life on the partying and stuff like that. I never was that girl. Mm -hmm. uh, I always was believing in, uh, in even in my house. I never remember we've been eating pork in the way. So my mom said, I was like, say to her, we don't, we're not gonna eat pork anymore. I, I'm, I'm not, I cannot eat pork. And she's like, that's fine. You tell me I'm when, when you would <laughs> last time. So in the way, uh, I would say, the way of my life was going, I would find this, uh, uh, these things in Islam. They were just exactly the same what I was believing. The way how I want to live, that was there. So I keep trying to wear hijab, but unfortunately that was the moment when my, my parents was disrespected by, by, by some neighbors or something. And uh, I just decided that's it. That's the, the, my point uh, of uh, you know of the uh, of, of the possibility to ignore all these people. I cannot ignore anymore to see my parents. I heard by some by someone because I wearing hijab and uh, you know that's that's no no. So, so somebody so disrespected your parents. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yes. The people wasn't like so. They, they wasn't this brave to come to me personally to say something to me about Islam or about my hijab or the way how I am, they was uh, direct this to my parents. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that was, that, that was like, uh, 
you know, out of my level of, uh, I couldn't, I, I couldn't accept that. Yeah, subhanAllah. Yeah, so, so my, so my parents do, do, do not feel uh, like hurt or, or disrespect in the way because my, my parents just always say, I ah, just leave them, doesn't matter. Because my father, my father uh, always was uh, the man who didn't like have trouble. He always liked to, you know, turn around situation in a, in a funny way, in the way. Yeah. So I remember the situation sure, when, when my uh, neighbor comes to my, my father and is like, what's wrong with your daughter? So what happened now? Like she covered so much. And, and he said, like, no, she always was, you know, wearing, wearing the clothes, but covering her body and stuff. He's, I don't know what you're speaking about. You know, she starts to wear this card on her head. So that means she joining her Arabs. And my father just say, you know what? Just look, take care of your own daughter. You know, the, because I see your daughter is uh, picked up from every evening by different uh, car or something like this. So, you know, I do not tell you that. So you just keep away from my daughter. So that was the funny situation for us. Like, I was so happy my father didn't lose control or, you know, he, he didn't speak a negative way to him or something like that. That was just shortcut the situation. Okay, and they said, just, just ignore them. That's all, just ignore them. They're living their own life. We're living their own life. That's, that doesn't matter. But uh, in that point, I just decided to take off my hijab and, uh, I just decided just like, you know, there, there, there is no point in that because if the people will be, you know, this uh, make you some dangerous situation for yourself, for your life yeah. or, or, or for uh, your, your safety is not the point. There's, <laughs> there is no point to wearing hijab when I or my parents have to worry all the time if I'm still alive or if somebody yeah. attack me or not attack me. Because the country when I'm coming from, there is like wearing hijab. That means um, you are, uh, you directly have to every day, uh, sometimes facing the, your life threatening or your health threatening. Anytime somebody who, who hate uh, Islam, they can uh, hurt you physically. Yeah. SubhanAllah. So in, in Poland, generally, there's a lot of like, you try and say that there's like attacks against Muslims is something common, like, or like the norm, even though they're Muslims are quite a minority. Anyways, the sisters, there's a lot of more uh, Muslim women right now in the Poland that was before, like 10 years ago, for example. And it's um, Muslim women, they're so strong. And so they this happened, alhamdulillah, by will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will be Muslim and I will be not ashamed sh of that. So they still, even, uh, you know, they still have the hijab. The way of the hijab they have, they're trying their best. They are not the way how we have, like, we can have in in UK or we can have uh, uh, in, in our country or something like that, because they are not able to having that. So I remember... Uh, I remember the sisters there in Poland, I, like they, they was uh, crying for, you know, <laughs> to wearing a proper hijab and, you know, having possibility to wear a baya or I wearing hijab. And I came here and I remember the, the days when I was seeing the sister um, in hijab or, or, or a bias in, in the way like you now here in UK when we're living longer, when we could see like super fancy sportish car or super nice house or something like this, you're just standing with the wow on, on your face with the open mouth. Mm. We've been looking like this on, on uh, sisters who was wearing uh, like hijab, niqab and a bias uh -huh. or jibab. Like this, like wow, Subhanallah! I can wear now whatever I want to. So this is like amazing thing for Subhanallah. for the people 
Cool. Well, I think you know so many people don't realize how how <laughs> blessed we are living in the UK that we can actually so, dress how we like. Exactly. So I just always say in the UK I do not have any oppress even wearing niqab. There's nothing because this is anything here cannot get any closer to the way uh, how uh, I could be trained in my own country. There is, yeah. you know, somebody some, sometimes look or somebody sometimes say something quietly. I mean, it never happened directly towards me, but you know, the people sometimes watching because of out of uh, curiosity or out of uh, I don't know, uh, out of uh, just people just watching. They always have some interest, but. I would never say that as a oppressing me or out of, of uh, you, you know, there's no kind of dangerous abuse, would you say, <laughs> from wearing the niqab? Yeah, I, I have no any form of, I once or twice like, oh, you shouldn't do it, go to Pakistan, if you want to wear it, go to Pakistan, and that's it. Um, that's happened more common in from the Muslim that a non-Muslim. Uh, so you were told that you should live in Pakistan? Um, <laughs> because you know why? Because some, I, even once I have a, one brother comes to me on the street and says, look sister, if you want to wear this on your face, go back to Pakistan. That's because of probably he can see I'm, my, I'm with my husband and uh, my be my husband is Pakistani, maybe he looked Pakistani to them, or, or you know, my family is Pakistani, so they, they taking the, they think I'm Pakistani as well, so, they were, yeah, <laughs> the first moment, because like, mm, how, how I'm gonna get to this Pakistan, because if I remember, I need some visa or something, I don't know <laughs> nobody there, I've been even in Asia, so, hmm. and then, you know, the text, something like this, you know, in, in European countries, you have to respect them. And I say, yes, brother, I do understand. For, first of all, I'm not your mahram woman, what you can just come over and speak to me wherever you want. The, sh the first thing you just, you should, uh, you know, learn your manners and uh, and, uh, and your Islamic rules. What you can do. And he would not take it very like uh, offensive. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I'm the European woman and I can choose whatever I want to choose and I will wear whatever I want to choose. If, if we even take out of Islam as a European woman, I've been uh, bring up all my life, I've been taught in my country as well, uh, in schools, by government, wherever I go, you are a free woman, you can choose whatever you want. But then some people decide, oh, you choose niqab for yourself, or you choose hijab for yourself. Oh no, you cannot change, you cannot choose it. So, you know, they, they are a little bit confused because they put in, you know, in the heart of the European limitations. Yeah, like it's, hypo it's hypocritical though, isn't it? Because obviously if you say you've got a free choice and then when you do yeah, choose something, exactly it's like, oh no, don't choose, choose anything, just don't choose that. <laughs> you just show yourself how hypocritic you are because, you know, so I'm choosing for myself, you give me the choice, freedom of choice, so I'm choosing what is the best for me. So you cannot tell me now, you know, I, I cannot choose that. So. I always, whatever I can go, uh, you living in Europe, this is Europe. You have freedom of choice for yourself as a woman. If you are oppressed by anyone of other women or oppressed by the men, you have to write to say no. You you know, your, your, your voice matter. And nobody can say to you what to wear. So I always, you know, I love my niqab so much. Um, I wear niqab, my niqab here in UK three years ago. I always liked my husband never liked too much. <laughs> His family never liked too much as well. I don't know why. Maybe it's come 
maybe some kind of cultural thing like they have in mind like niqab is is belong to village women or yeah. something like that you know in the city in the city women do not wear niqab or something like this but you know for me is i do not live in muslim country i never have been living in a muslim country so i don't know how it is there yeah, for me I remember the time when one of my friends she just say like randomly you know what girls i do I just do sort out in my wardrobe. I have few niqabs, but I don't want to wear. If you, some of you would like to have this uh, niqabs and make a use of it, just take it. And I'll just straight away the opportunity for me because I, I will have no possibility to try never before niqab and I will never have before, I, I, after as well because I don't have friends who wear niqab, I don't have family who wear niqab. I will be too shy to go to the shop and buy a niqab myself because I'm just like, I, you don't know. So I took these niqabs from her, and when I come back to home, I put on my face, and I was like, that's it. <laughs> I want my niqab, like, Subhanallah. forever. And I would just, like, jump out of joy, or, you know, to my husband, show him, look, how amazing is that? And he was just <laughs> like, take it off. No, <laughs> you're not going to, you look like ninja and stuff like that. So your husband again, told you he, to take it off when you first put it on? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> he said to me, oh, because for him was exactly the same. He didn't, that was exactly the same like for everyone really. Even if, even he is Muslim, you know, he don't have the access, he, he you know, like access to him. He don't see on everyday basics and any cabbies. He don't have any cabbies in the family or his mother never wore any cabbies. Family in Pakistan never wear niqab, so mm. for him it was something new as well. So that's the thing. But he was like, really, no. When I was speaking with him, so what's the so what's the really problem? This again and again. You know, you can wear, you can choose whatever you want, but no, you cannot choose that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm the curious one. I was like, why this is happening to me all the time? But you know, the true, the yes, the true. The, the struggle, the true, the trouble, you learning, like you make yourself stronger and and this is your own decisions. Like probably maybe if he will say, oh, you look nice or oh, you look fine. Let's go outside and see, see, see people reaction or something like that. So maybe probably after two days, I will take it off, put it down and, and stuff. Situation like this. So he, he basically thought think, that like, if, he, if he let you to do it for a few days, then afterwards you'd just get put off by people's negative reactions. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, maybe if he would be more open and more more supportive, I would be not so attached to Nikap. Okay. <laughs> I just think through the years, because of his negative reaction, that make me more stronger and more more attached more to you. Determined. Wow, mashallah. Yeah. And I said, no, like you know, you grow in your in, in your head. This is my decision, and I will wear my niqab. Doesn't matter what, you know. And I like I want to say like every difficulty is what you have that make you grow. Everything what you have like easy uh, access to, uh, never. Like people say, easy come, easy go, you know. Yeah, subhanAllah, subhanAllah, it's so true, yeah. isn't it? And a sister, what you have uh, difficulties out there, you just uh, go, you know, difficulties will not be all the time. The, the, there's time when they will end. But through these difficulties, you will find out yourself. You will be, you know, you will find out who you are and what you want in your life. You, what is for you is important or what is less important. So Alhamdulillah, a situation like that, that uh, really is blessing, not, you know, a punishment or something like this. I, I know this now. I didn't know that three years ago. I just, I was thinking this, like, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why you give me this struggle? What, what, why I cannot have what I want and stuff oh, like that? So, you know, you have to, you have, you, you have to just look on everything what, what happened to you. It's just for a reason. And trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the most important thing. Just trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because 
some situation, even negative situation, can bring you to some really good thing in your life. Yeah, subhanAllah. It's a really beautiful perspective to have, to be honest. I think that's really like, subhanAllah, your story is it just, it's, it's very, it's, for me, it's quite unique. I think that the, what you've been through, like, and everything at each stage, you've basically, you know, had this kind of grit determination just to keep going. You know, you and you've, you, it's made you, it's given you more clarity, I think. Like yeah. every time when you when you was faced with adversity, that gave you more clarity. Whereas for some people, those are the times when they start feeling more doubts. But with you, it's been completely the opposite. You you become more clear that yes, definitely, this is what I want. Subhanallah, mm. it's really beautiful. Yeah. Yes, always. You know, don't get me wrong. There's not like uh, I don't have doubt or I'm not in down because I am. I have them little moments. Everyone have. I sometimes I have myself. Like I think. Like when I see the Muslim did that, the Muslim did this, sometimes, you know, uh, it's negative things. And when you find out they are really did this, so they are not like they are accused for that. They really happen. So sometimes I have, I have these moments like I'm thinking, oh, you know, I'm, I will be like, I'm going out and these people out there, they will be putting me in the same place what what the people who, who who did something what i really you know i do my best in my life and do i really want to be put together with that kind of people but that is a very short moment in my life so mm -hmm. so it is 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 you know you have some doubts you have some downs what you can think like but i do think it's just kind of like uh, as well some like shaitan tell you Oh no, maybe your your choice was was wrong. But after two minutes, you know, I, I go through every, every difficulties what I have in my life and what I choose, and I go through. I was like, this is nothing. I'm going out there, and I will show them true face of Islam. That's it. What yes, you have to do, you show yourself. Like, uh, show them you are not and they like them they are, islam is not like them they're like they, they do mistake like everyone do mistake they, they you know because they are muslim they they are allowed to do mistake as well but there mm -hmm. is like things now if they, they will learn and they will like uh, repent from it or or no that's they so you know uh, out of this i going uh, a lot in the places when Sometimes non-Muslim is an um, in my in my niqab. I'm going pushing through these people, my husband behind me, and say, "Please don't. No, we're not going there. We will get in trouble. And come on, we're not going to get trouble. I will show you." And it's happened. I I sometimes think like, you know, you have to be chosen for this as well. Like maybe Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give me that, uh, you know, that things to do. Like go. To, through the non-Muslim and show them, you know, the niqab is a normal woman. They are like, yes, exactly like, I have few situations like in my life when, when we're going to places, because as my, uh, as I am a journalist, I like to go see places. I like yeah. to uh, new art gallery. I like to do some historical uh, events. I like to do things. I like to for my kids, not even for myself, but for my kids, I want to show them all these things. So. I'm there sometimes, most of the time alone, <laughs> and I sometimes thinking, this is gonna happen. Something, somebody tell me, go away from here, or, or you know, or uh, ask me about time. No, never. Since we are positive, the 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 exp my experience is um, like. How oh, I can tell you one funny story, what happened to me this summertime. Uh, I was with my daughter and my husband shopping. My husband went to, uh, left me with my daughter in the middle of the shop, um, um, entrance door. And uh, he went to pay for the, uh, for the parking. And there was a man, <laughs> there was like in middle age, white man asking me, can you, can you look after my, uh, uh, my grocery in in uh, in a basket. I will come back in a minute. I was so shocked because I was the only <laughs> guy who are around. He could ask anybody, and he chose me. So I was just thinking like, that's it. That is some prank. 
that must be something dodgy going here. So probably somebody jump out with a camera or something. That have to be like some setup there. Subhanallah. And, and the man, I'm like, okay, okay, I will look after your basket, no problem. My daughter was shocked by herself. I was like, what, mom? Why did you say yes? What's gonna happen now? Let's see what's gonna happen. And um, we was we, we was expecting like many things could happen, but and the man just come say thank you, and take <laughs> take uh, his uh, uh, he bring his car closer to door to 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 load the uh, shopping to the uh, boot, and he just normally said thank you so much and walk away. <laughs> so Mashallah. we. I, I just felt that moment, how stupid I am, why I cannot believe the people who have normal reaction and have, and just look on me like a normal person, like doesn't matter what, doesn't matter what you wear in your car. And then I spoke with my friends about this, all this situation. Uh, my husband couldn't believe, my daughter said, this really happens. I'm like, you're joking. I was like, no, it really happened. So he have the opening eyes as well, like, mm. you know, there's no, it's not that much bad people out there. It's, I would say there's many good, really normal people who take it, who like to take Nikabi in positive way. And for them, it doesn't matter if they're wearing Nikab or whatever they're wearing. They, they, they just, you know, this normal interaction every day. That's it. Um, and uh, I spoke with my friends and they were saying to me, like, you know, you was the only one in Nikab, like, uh, uh, worth to trust <laughs> in that situation that. telling me you know, he chose you because you you know you was in niqab so he knew you are muslim so you're not steal his his, his grocery or something <laughs> so, <laughs> Alhamdulillah. so that was really 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 the situation like that that's giving you some really positive power to for, definitely for tomorrow Alhamdulillah. And, and you, you know, know just this is do part your, of Islam you as well, do, just... because, you know, as Muslims, we're supposed to think positively of people. You know, this is something that we're told in our religion. We're supposed to think positively of others, not think negatively of people. And I think that with the media and the kind of stereotypes that are being put on, you know, women who do choose to wear the niqab, like even even for us who wear it, still in our minds, we have these kind of, um, you know, we're being influenced into thinking in this particular way, like when we go to places that something bad might happen to us or, you know, yeah, people just yeah. not going to like us, yeah. you know, because of what we're wearing. But, you know, Allah always has his way of showing us that actually people don't all think like that. You know, not everybody looks at us and thinks negatively. And even for people who maybe when they look at us and they see like something, you know, which they think is negative, just by having small interactions, daily interactions with people, you can help to dispel a lot of their kind of misconceptions. You know, yeah. just like sometimes they think maybe you're not speaking English or like, you know, you're somebody who, you know, you, you're you against maybe non-Muslims. You know, they might have these kind of ideas in their mind, but just having like day-to-day -day interactions, it helps to give people like a positive, um, you know, experience and help to change their minds. Yeah, but you do not have the possibility of take their own opinion. They do not have possibility because they, they, they never meet an Nikabi woman, you know, yeah. the, in their life. So only what they have, uh, what is given to them to believe is what the media is saying or what the politicians are saying or, or or someone there in the family, what they, for example, they say, oh, I, I, I went for holiday to Egypt and they are like this or that. And so they have to base their opinion on opinion by people who they kind of trust. But when they interact with the, the, the uh, uh, sister who wear niqab or wear uh, hijab, they are just actually finding out they are just normal people. They are exactly the same. We don't do any different uh, uh, things apart them, like, you, you know, apart the praying five times per day or more, or, or, or sometimes... Uh, fasting or, or or stuff like this but in normal the interaction to to see things or to do some activities we have no any different uh between us so this is the this is this is the thing what i i do believe we have to just you know stop 
in my point of view, we need to stop speaking. <laughs> it's less speaking, more doing. Yeah, subhanAllah. Because that's what it is, it's, it's the actions. Our actions make the difference. And, and so sometimes it's like I do from my my own, you know, per perspective and from the the um, my position, what I can see around the Muslim woman and more or niqabi and, and uh, uh, hijabi woman, they are scared to interact with them because they are not, uh, you know, because they hear exactly the same things or they see somewhere in media like uh, niqabi or hijabi woman was straight like this uh, or that. And the same, the another way. So I do believe we as a river, we have, we, we can be good bridge between them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, you know, you are Muslim, so you know how to interact with Muslim uh, people, you know what they expect and you, you know how their life is going on. And you know as well as non-Muslim because you've been non-Muslim, so you are just more open to speak with non-Muslim as well yes. because they are more like close to you as well. So the niqabi or hijabi women who are a river, I do believe they have the good opportunity to, to, to make this bridge between. Um, and I think we should do it more often or often to, uh, I, uh, I do believe what I, we, we've been speaking before, like not every woman has have ability or not every woman has this strength or some women, they can be more shy and stuff like that. They don't want to do it. So, of course, don't do it because, you know, there's nothing uh, what you have to do or uh, do against your will or your, or your family or your husband or, or a thing like this. If you feel you are strong enough and you see any benefit for you and Islam in that kind of activity, just do it. Just try it because you don't be scared because of somebody tell you to be scared because you have in your mind all the time what could bad because you can miss a lot of good things happen to you. So of course, you know, definitely. That's the fear is what stops most people from succeeding, anyways, because they never get started. I mean, I think we all have this kind of fear inside of us, fear of the unknown. So it's important to not, not let that get the better of us most of the time. You know, try to put ourselves out there a little bit if you have the ability. Obviously, everybody, as you said, has different capabilities. And that's, that's, what's, that's what makes a community. Everybody is different. So, sister, yeah. just to finish off for this interview, mashallah, tabarakallah, we've nearly come out to an hour now. Um, what advice would you give to sisters who would like to wear the niqab but are kind of questioning whether they should or and maybe they feel afraid of wearing it? What advice would you give them? Just don't afraid, just trust Allah. So the opportunity is coming your way, just grab it. Don't think twice. Uh, believe in whatever is sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it. I think you, you, you don't need more. There, there's like practice, uh, trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believe he, more in the good happens in your life and less in bad happens can happen. I think that's it. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair, sister. Allahumma barik. It's been a really, really nice discussion with you. Um, and thank you for your time. Jazakallah khair. Um, Thank you so much for for inviting me and, and give me the opportunity to sharing with you all my, my story. And I hope, inshallah, when you will be walking around and see Muslim woman or more women in hijab, in a, a niqab, you will look a little bit differently on her after that, maybe more positive yeah. and more open. Inshallah. Just like a